Next test we're going to do today is for the hamstrings. We can test the hamstrings collectively, so meaning both medial and lateral groups, or we can test them individually. To begin with, I'm going to test them both. I'm going to have him flex his leg up to somewhere between 90 and 50 degrees. I'm going to ask him to hold that position. Don't let me pull it down. And I'm going to pull him into extension. If he can take maximal to strong resistance, that will be a five. If he can only tolerate moderate resistance, that would be a four. If he can go through the full range of motion, that would be a three, okay? Now, if I want to try to uh, determine which one of the hamstrings may be weak, if I detect a little bit of weakness, I can turn his foot by rotating his tibia one way or the other to try to selectively recruit either the medial or lateral hamstring. So if I internally rotate his foot and have him hold, you can probably even see his semitendinosus and membranosus are firing really well there. If I want to check the biceps and morris, I have him externally rotate. Hold, don't let me pull you down. I can selectively check the lateral hamstrings. All right, so that gave me five, four, and three. If I want to look at two, I'm going to have him roll to his side. I'm going to cradle his leg. I'm going to put his uh, knee in extension, and I'm going to have him now flex his knee out of gravity. If he can go through full range of motion, that will be a two. And with this one, I want to be careful that I don't let his leg internally rotate where he's having to go against gravity or let his hip externally rotate where gravity just uh, lets his foot fall into or his lower leg fall into flexion. So I got to keep it very level here as he flexes his knee. So full range of motion would be a two. I have him lay back prone. I can Put his knee in just a little bit of flexion and now I can palpate either the lateral or the medial to test for uh, a one and then obviously zero would be no contraction whatsoever.